What, your closet doesn't look like this? We got some chicken chores to tend to. <laughs> I just cut up a bunch of fruit. Oh my gosh, a fly landed right on my nose, which I will probably share with you in a little bit, but I'm gonna feed all of these delectable scraps to my starving chickens. We had a pretty cool Great American camp out last night, or I guess we can call it the Great Wadsworth camp out. Hello, ladies. Look, I have food. Ladies, hello, ladies. Come on, look, it's food. Eat the food. They just run away from me. <laughs> here, here. So we had a campfire going last night. I kinda still smell like campfire. A little bit like BO because <laughs> we sparked it back up again this morning. So uh, that's been really nice. It's delicious outside. The weather is fantastic, but I have some things that I need to get done around the house today. To prepare for the week ahead, I'm gonna do a little meal prep, which I feel like I kind of did with the fruit, uh, but like more substantial like dinners and stuff. Maybe I will meal plan, I don't really know, but I do know I need to do laundry, tidy up around the house, make sure everything is ready for the week ahead, a little weekly reset, if you will. You know what, I didn't even sleep outside, I didn't camp outside, but my neck is killing me. And that's a story for another time. But I'm waiting on these chickens to eat the scraps. Come on, ladies. Come on. They just keep running away. <laughs> I'm trying to bring them the food. Eat the food. Oh, shoot. I left the gate open. Oh, crap. <laughs> All right, let the chicken chase begin. Wrong way. Wrong way. Good. No, this way. This way, you chickens. Good. Good girls. Good girls. No, this way. Oh, come on, you chickens. Yeah. Go in. No, go in your home. Oh, they're escaping. They're all escaping. All right, two in, two out. Oh crap. Whatever, I'm out of breath, it's useless. I do have some sourdough bread to throw in the oven and coolest thing ever is I, you have to preheat the oven to 500 degrees, it's scorching in there. And can you see in here? Two Dutch ovens. Do you know why? Because I went to an estate sale yesterday and got this beauty. Check it out. Guess how much it was, you'll never guess. Take your guesses below. Make them right now. I'll wait for you to press enter. I just realized I don't have parchment paper. What am I gonna do? Um, I don't know. I do know that I need to score this. I don't have parchment paper. You guys, I've been up for hours and mostly chasing the baby around. Um, a lot of kids stayed over last night and a part of me thought, you know, go to public, grab a whole smorgasbord, and the boys are easy to please. They wake up really early and they just like scrounge around <laughs> and get whatever. But I feel like they're camping. Someone brought Pop-Tarts and I was like, seems like a good breakfast to me. <laughs> All right, I'm texting my neighbor to borrow a cup of sugar kind of thing. So fingers crossed. Otherwise, I don't know, I'm gonna have to Google like what else I can use. I'm gonna throw this back in the oven while I score it. I was just really excited to share it with you. You wanna see the inside? By the way, it's Lodge. So like for $5, I think mine looks worse than this for five bucks, that's crazy sauce. I always make two sourdough breads at a time, but I always have to like cook them, you know, so it takes me forever, first world problems. And so this way I was like, this is perfect. They both fit in the oven. All right, I'm gonna figure out the parchment paper situation. I'm waiting for my neighbor to get back with me. All the teenagers came inside, started scrounging around for something to eat. I said, there's Pop-Tarts outside. And they all said, Pop-Tarts. <laughs> so hopefully that will satiate them until the bread is ready because, well, I didn't make anything else. I'm gonna get a load of laundry going. This has Meredith's Rest Linens in it, so. Hold on, wait. I need to put sanitizer in here too. Cause it's like towels and stuff. Plus it smells really good. Don't let the illusion of this laundry room fool you. I am not up on laundry, even though like the baskets say otherwise. Um, it just means I have a whole lot of dirty laundry that it needs to be done around the house. But anyway, every time I turn my neck, I'm like, oh, I got the crank in my neck. What does the genie say? 16, it can't, it's gotta be more than 16 years. What a crank in the neck. Whose are these? But speaking of that, I've been looking into getting a Fitbit. Well, wait, did I share this with you? I don't know. I've been looking into like Apple or Fitbit watch, just like a fitness tracker, just to see. But mostly I wanna track my, oh, maybe those are Eleanor's. I think these are all Eleanor's clothing. Uh. I wanna see how much I sleep, or how little I sleep, I should say. 
I kind of don't want to know and I used to wear it but I always take it off when I have a newborn because I don't I like ignorance is bliss at that point but now I'm at the point where some days I am tired beyond belief and I'm wondering why like is it what I'm eating or did I only get four hours of broken sleep last night and that would make things make sense I do have a Fitbit it's older and I had to like look up what it was in my old orders. I think I ordered a wristband for it because I don't even have a band for it. It's the worst. So it's a blaze apparently and I took a little test online to see like what Fitbit would be best for me and I even forgot which one was but I don't know there's so many these days. What's better Fitbit, Apple, I took a poll on Instagram everyone seems to be really into Apple products. I don't know if it's because they're trendy or it's because it's, they're easily accessed. Whenever I had an Apple watch of course it was like first generation I could not, I, we programmed it when I say we, Alex programmed it so I could get phone calls on it, which like, why am I spending the extra money to get phone calls on it? I'm just gonna end it. I'm like, my phone is, I feel like I'm always by my bed. Anyway, the text message notification is pretty cool, and but that's on the Fitbit too. Anyway, I could never figure out how to track my fitness on my Apple. I couldn't figure out how to look at my heart rate. I couldn't figure anything out. And I was like, this is miserable. So that's why I never wore it. I don't even know where it is. I don't know if I gave it back to Alex or if I gave it to Avelina. I don't think anyone wears it. Alex enjoys his Apple Watch, but some things just aren't for me. So if you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them because clearly I don't know much about anything, but I am curious. But anyway, so I don't even have a charger for it anymore. I couldn't find it anywhere. So, I mean, it might be in the box of wires that we have, one of the five boxes of wires that we have out in the garage, but a charger is like $7, so I'm just gonna order one. So apparently aluminum foil slash and or grease, that could work. I'm going to score it. Ugh. All right, simple yet effective. Let's see, I didn't really flower the top of this, so I might have to do that. Okay, wish me luck. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, beauty. Well, it's stuck a little bit. There you go, she's beauty and she's grace. I got these patterns and I think they're pretty awesome. All right, one, done. Actually, I do see some people like kind of score the side like so. We'll see how that turns out. That looks fun. All right. Is aluminum foil a bad choice? Here's your chance to speak up. It's now or never. Bono style. What is that, you too? Oh gosh, it's not going in. Now or never. Oh, this is miserable. That's the worst thing I've ever done in my life. Okay, well, we, that, we did that, so. Into the oven. With the next one, I'm going rogue, and I'm just not going to use any aluminum foil. I'm gonna grease the hell out of it. Oh no, it got sticky. Oh gosh, I'm an idiot. Hold on, I gotta flower my hand. Actually, let's flop it. There we go. Hey, that's looking pretty good. We're gonna do the same pattern. Scoring is an art. I am not an artist. I'm being very careful because one time I did this and my fingers started bleeding. Okay, that's good enough. That actually looks pitiful, but oh well. Oh, this one's the worst. Burnt all over the bottom. Oh, curses, where's my parchment? I'm just gonna put some aluminum foil at the bottom. <laughs> and grease it. Probably should have used like shortening or something, but I didn't. Oh gosh, this, you know, follow me for, for more homesteading techniques. Okay, good enough. That's what we call good enough. Into the oven. Ooh. Well, while that cooks, I'm going to finish slicing up the strawberries, but I'll show you all the fruit that I slice and diced. Don't you just love having pre-sliced fruit in your fridge ready to eat? One of my favorite things, it makes packing lunches a breeze. <laughs> It makes it so simple in the morning. I just take a spoon, divvy it out, and everyone's lunch pails, and I just love it so much. And it's also good just to have on hand for snacking, too. I just love it. A little bit of effort goes a long way. I mean, it is kind of time-consuming to do it all at once, but, you know, someone's got to do it. So this, the strawberries, obviously, I did right when I was filming, but this whole bit was right when I got up in the morning. You can see the sourdough behind me. So you're supposed to take it out of the fridge after you let it sit all night. Um, and then you let it sit on the counter for, I think an hour, whatever, as the 
oven preheats and stuff. So Wolfgang is my big helper watching this in fast motion. I love it so much. I think it's so dang adorable watching him. I always give him those little kid knives. He loves it so much. Meredith loves them a lot. Wolf even Wentworth does because um, obviously they're a lot safer than using actual knives and they, you can cut with them, but I know that they're pretty safe for him to hold on to, but he feels like he's helping and it's just so great. So that's, it was just really cute to watch this in fast motion, watching him like eat, like chomp on his food. I gave him some kiwi, gave him some pineapple, gave him some mango. And honestly, man, I've been loving pineapple lately. I feel like either last year or the year before, I just kept buying really horrible pineapple. The same goes for watermelon. The other day I even splurged and bought pre-cut watermelon. I know who the heck, but I, I just feel like these days you have to because none of the watermelons I pick out are good. None of them, not even a single one. And so I have to like splurge and watermelon used to be like an affordable fruit that, I mean, obviously it's not watermelon season, but hello, it's GMO. Like it's always the season for any fruit because it's all fake, <laughs> you know? So like, why are the watermelons so horrible? Kiwis are always great. The cantaloupe or melon, whatever, that's always great. Doesn't matter if it's January, February, February, June, July, September. It doesn't matter. Always good. So what is it with the watermelons? I don't know. Not even summertime can I pick a good one, really. Maybe one time last year I had a good one. That's my rant about water. And I don't even, don't even give me the tips. Like, oh, you have to do this. I don't care. I've tried them all. They all suck. I suck, really, is the catalyst. It's, I'm the problem. It's me. Hi. Riding along in my automobile. Taking a break. He needed to come outside. He would live outside if I let him. But for now, I see you. He's loving coming on his little bicycle and just going up and down the lane. And it just really wears him out. I'm trying to crouch down to give you a good view, but this is actually my view. <laughs> so I'm 5'9 and stuff. <laughs> Look how dang cute he is. I just can't. Hi, buddy. What you doing? On your bicycle? Living life on your trike. <laughs> a car, yeah. Try to make it a point. Oh my gosh, that sunshine. Gimme, give gimme give that sunshine. It's so good. I try to make it a point, we all do, to come outside just to catch that vitamin D on our skin. It's so good for us. Also, oh my gosh, grounding. Have you heard of people doing this? But it <laughs> makes me laugh. People literally cut out the soles of their shoes so they can ground, but they live in the city. I've seen like videos on Instagram or whatever. Forever. I'm like, you're not grounding if you're <laughs> walking on concrete. Oh, some people make me laugh. But Wolfgang is the king of grounding. Really everyone in my family is. Oh my gosh, just get outside. It always makes me feel so much better. Especially when the weather is so nice and this good, it's easy to come outside. But when it's miserable, when it's a hundred degrees outside and the humidity is through the roof and I literally open my front door and I just start sweating. Those are the days where I'm dreading. <laughs> oh, and I saved the pineapple top because our neighbor has just this pineapple garden. So I've been trying to add to it. <laughs> oh gosh, timer just went off. I was outside and Alex said, it smells like it's burning. So that's not a good sign. <laughs> But I walked in here, it doesn't smell like it's burning to me. Moment of truth. <gasps> Ooh. Okay, I've seen worse. Also have seen a lot better. So that's, I don't know. The tin foil, usually it's more brown than this. All right, let's peek on this one. Uno, dos, tres. Ooh. I've also seen better. Huh, maybe I did something wrong. I don't know, this one doesn't look too bad. Back in the oven. So, 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 Nothing, not many things are better than fresh bread. Am I right? And then add on to that the fact that we have fresh butter. Oh, come on. This is top tier dining right here. And it's just so funny because it's obviously minimal ingredients. The taste of sourdough is just unexplainably delicious. And it's so much more potent when it's homemade. Like I all buy sourdough from Publix 
And obviously, there's a ton of health there benefits, There she too. blows. She's looking real good. And was I calling that a cast iron skillet before? It is a Dutch oven. Sure you know. Yeah. Ooh, it's hot, hot. You want to eat some? So the health benefits to this. Oh, and you know what I've realized? Cutting it when it's hot, almost impossible. You have to wait for it to cool down. And then somehow it's magical. Like this is the sharpest knife ever created. It's a, what's the brand? It starts with a C. Cutco? It is crazy sharp. And it's still, I'm like sawing for two minutes trying to break skin on this bread. But anyway, w once you let it cool, then it's super easy to cut. I don't know, because I've been cutting the second loaf and it's totally fine. But it's always the first couple cuts that hurt the most. The first cut is the deepest. And then what hurts me the most is when the teenagers come out here. Oh, can I have some fresh bread? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and cut some. And then they'll cut like half a loaf. I'm like, oh my God, it took me a day to make it. Cut a little smaller piece, will you? <laughs> Not, okay, here's the butter. I'm loving the butter canister, the butter crock, what have you. Delicious, delightful, spreadable butter. And that's homemade too. And uh, yeah, I'm basically a homesteader. I don't know how else to explain it. I just like fresh, I really just like eating. So that's why I cook. Who else is going to do it? Will I'll you? have you know that there are so many people here. The Pop-Tarts and snacks didn't last. And, well, don't tell the Food Network about this little mishap here. <laughs> and so now everyone's asking for more food. I made buttermilk, homemade butter. So I've got all that buttermilk and I'm gonna make some pancakes. Even though it's lunchtime, it's fine. It's like brunch, right? It's the weekend. But I need to get up on like making my own pancake mix. I haven't found a good recipe. I, just, I guess I just need to try it out, right? It can't be hard to replicate. Flour, sugar, and then this mix. Oh my gosh. I just let it sit for just a little bit and not so thick and creamy and rich. By the way, that book back there, I switched it to springtime. It did have Mardi Gras and St. Patty's Day, but I just sprung forward to like spring slash Easter. But this book is called Beautiful Boards. Let me get these pancakes on and then I'll show it to you. Oh crap, they want a chocolate chip. Ugh. The batter tastes really good too. That's like a taste from my childhood. My dad would always add cinnamon to the pancakes, but my kids, I did that one time and they were like, um, can you not do that again? So I don't do that, but they do love chocolate chips. Gotta make it fun, I guess. It's the weekend, right? Some with, some without, but this book, Beautiful Boards. It's one of my favorites. It's one of the only books that I read. <laughs> and this is what it looks like. I got it off Amazon. Well, actually it was a gift, but it is on Amazon and they just have a bunch of like board inspiration for all kinds of themes even like brunch boards and stuff like that. So I really enjoy it, but then they also, I just use it as a decor piece for the holidays or whatever season it is. And I just think it's so fun. So I just leave it on my counter. Oh, here's a pancake board. Oh, that looks so good. My pancakes aren't gonna look that good, I don't think. But that's okay. And then this is the stand that I have and it protects it like that, so that's good. I get a lot of questions about that. I don't know if I mentioned that. That's why I decided to like talk about it a little bit. I'll try to link it. I'm not very good at putting links. I will do my best. I mean, you can also just Google it, whatever. But here are the pancakes. Here's the spread. I got bread and butter. I got the fruit and I got the pancakes with the chocolate chips and all that good stuff. It's a smorgasbord. I told myself I wasn't gonna do it, but there I did it anyway. It's like the simple way to do it. And also I needed to prep the fruit anyway, so. That's what I put out. I'll, I could have gone above and beyond and gone to Publix and gotten the croissants and the chocolate, uh, what are they? I don't even know what they're called. The bear claws and all that good stuff. And the donuts. Oh my gosh. I'm just trying to not eat as many carbs, you know, as I shove my face full of sourdough bread. The sourdough bread carbs don't count, right? Right. Yeah. Let's just go with that. I, I feel like a sourdough carb is not equivalent to a donut carb. <laughs> I mean, technically it's sugar-free, so it's got to be a little different. But anyway, that's all I'm craving right now. Uh, donuts, since I didn't go out and get them, and also potato chips. What are you craving right now? 
I want like a crunchy, like kettle cooked potato chip. You know how they sell that enormous bag from Costco for like $4. And then you walk by and you think, well, I mean, how can I not buy this? And then on the way home from Costco, you're like, oh, well, I need a snack on the way home. Can't eat you know, produce because it's unwashed. Well, let me bust into the bag. And then you get home, you unload the car and then you sit down because you're exhausted from all the grocery shop and all that good stuff. So then you sit down and what do you need? A little snack. What do you grab? Well, the bag's already open. (laughs) Well, give me some more of those potato chips. No, just me. Okay. What's your go-to snack? We haven't had potato chips in so long. Maybe it's just the salt that I'm craving. I've been drinking. I don't even have it next to me. I have a um, a drink without ice in it, but without a straw is what I meant to say. It also doesn't have ice, but that's irrelevant. I have been craving salt. Probably just need to drink some more element. On days that I don't work out, I don't normally drink anything like that, like liquid IV or an element or anything, but... Maybe I need to. I don't know. I need to hydrate more. I feel like I've been slacking on that. I need to do a lot more. You know, it's just how do you keep up with all the things? You got to keep up with so much. Oh, it's just too much. I need help. (laughs) Even this video, I planned on doing a lot more than I actually got done. Although I feel like I didn't film half of the day or more than it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I try to lower my expectations on what I can get done in a day, but it's fine. Some days I get done more than others, but it's like, it's not as if I sit down. It's not like I'm doing nothing, you know, chasing kids outside all the time. Oh, Wolfgang wants to be outside all the time. He's just an outdoor boy. And I'm so glad we have the space for him to just be able to run and explore and all that good stuff but man it's exhausting just being outside all the time I'm like I am not made for this okay I'm an inside kind of gal <laughs> so I'm moving on I decided my kitchen not my kitchen my fridge needed a very big mother's touch oh you guys it was rank in there I don't know what the heck but I opened it some, maybe the night before or something and I thought There's something dying there. It smells rank. It is gross. It needs more than just a little wipe down, even though that's really all I gave it. Just a big wipe down. I never really remove the stuff on the doors of the fridge. Oh, and then inside of the drawers, it's just a big old mess in there. I'm pretty sure just something was rotting away. You'll see in a second. I'll show you the drawer because I don't hide my skeletons. There they are. Yeah, you're not a mess. I'm a mess. Okay, there it is. It's fine. It's like vegetables go bad if you don't eat them. Did you know that? (laughs) And then the fruit drawer. We're pretty good about like sifting through the stuff. But on occasion, there'll be like one cucumber that just gets lost in the shuffle and shoved to the bottom. You know, I'm pretty sure that's what that was. All that, all that liquid juice. Anyway, what have you been up to lately? I have been obsessing over home decor and finding antique items or thrifted items or secondhand items, trying to decorate the office and my bedroom and Wolfgang's room. Oh my gosh. And then after that, Wentworth has been begging for like a room refresh. And then the girls, obviously, they need a few things for their bedroom. So I'm kind of drowning in all of that. We did go to the thrift store yesterday, Alex and I. Maybe I'll share a thrift haul with you because we got so much stuff. I, he wanted to come with me and I thought he would like talk me out of, I don't know, everything. But I was the one who was like, no, we don't need it. Please stop. So, um, that was a good time. And I found a couple of pretty cool pieces. And then of course I'm scouring marketplace trying to find like, I don't know, hidden gems. And I just feel like people on Marketplace, they are a special type of people. It'll be in the description. If the ad is up, then it is available. So then I'm like, okay, let's arrange pickup. And they respond, oh, item is sold or item is gone. Or, oh, I, you know, it's been listed for eight weeks and they finally come. Oh, so sorry. Uh, it's been donated. Like then take the post down. And then what's worse is that Like, you know, they'll message me, oh, it's gone. And then I'll see it still, you know, for another week. I'm like, I just want to message them and be like, please take this down. (laughs) It hurts my heart. When I get my heart set on something, I'm like, oh my gosh, that would be perfect. And then I wait for their response. I'm like, oh, please, please, please. And then it's gone, you know? So 
I found the coolest bookshelf, like a kid's bookshelf. It was like 60s and I'm on the hunt for one. Found the best one and it's gone, of course. Oh, sorry, we donated it, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Excuses. And then, you know, of course, it's always like the coolest things <laughs> that are like, oh, sorry, the post was up for so long. No one was interested and we donated. I'm like, where was I eight weeks ago when you posted? Oh, man, you know. Everything will come in good time. And then I just think my style is so eclectic that not every I'm buying everything for like one room, but I just feel like nothing goes together. But then also I feel like that could kind of be a theme too, where just everything is hodgepodge, but it might, it might look great. It might look horrible. It might just look okay. And so those are my expectations for the room, but there's that. I feel like I'm almost done with my office. I just need to buy an office chair. So that's what I'm waiting on this morning. I found one. Okay. <laughs> that's another thing about Facebook marketplace. People are crazy. I found this one chair and I thought, Oh, that's perfect. Like you guys know myself, old grandma aesthetic. And I'm like, Oh man, that love that chair right there. Yes, please click on it. Expecting it to be like, I don't know, 20 bucks. Okay. 10. Really? If you saw this thing at a garage sale, they'd be like free. They'd have a sticker on it. Please take me home. But no, this lady, $350. I'm over here thinking like, was there a typo? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Like, some of the stuff, you guys, I should just share it with you. We should just have a ball and go through all the Facebook marketplace finds and then, I don't know, talk about it because some of the stuff is so ridiculous. But $350, I said, what the heck do you think that you have? <laughs> Uh, that's not the chair that I'm getting because no freaking way I'm spending $350 on that. If you saw it, you'd know. Anyway, it looks so good, fresh. What in the parent trap was happening in this tent last night? I don't even think anyone stayed in this tent. There were a ton of kids who were here. Um, not all of them stayed the night, but maple syrup in the tent? We, I just, I can't. <laughs> Well, outside's a mess, inside's a mess. There's camping stuff everywhere. There's crumbs everywhere. I feel like I need to just take back a little bit of control in my life. So I am going to put together, I would show you the rest of my kitchen even though I just cleaned it. <laughs> it doesn't look clean anymore. There's kids everywhere. I'm, I'm gonna make some food. And then while that's cooking, I'm going to clean my closet because I feel like you can only control what you can control. And right now everything is out of control. Kids are crying. It's fine. They're fine. Hey, I've been out there for two hours and it's still not clean. It's fine. Alex will take care of the rest. He's real good at that. <laughs> so when he gets home, he'll do that. I took this out a while ago. So I'm just going to cook these up. I'm going to make enchiladas just because I have beef. I have chicken. So you can guess I'm going to make beef enchiladas and chicken enchiladas. You guessed it. I'm not being fancy about this in any capacity. I'm not following a recipe. Was about to make street corn enchiladas, and then there was obviously another recipe I was gonna follow, but then I just figured, um, pass on that. It's like reason number 20 why I love ground beef so much. It cooks up so fast. By the time I just took this out of the package, and like I'm just gonna cut it into pieces. I don't know, why am I cutting it? I have to cut it eventually. You know what I was thinking? Because of the types of cheeses that I have in my fridge, I don't know if I have enough cheddar cheese for like two recipes, but I do have Parmesan cheese. And has there ever been like an Italian enchilada? Like a chicken Parmesan enchilada? <laughs> I mean, come on. I think they just call it lasagna. <laughs> well, update, the ground turkey, Turkey? Why did I even say that? <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> I want to be healthy. The ground beef is done. Completely seasoned and all good. And I am still shredding up this chicken. And by shredding, I mean cutting. I just seasoned the meat with like some taco seasoning. So cumin, chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, paprika. You know, that whole song and dance. Now I'm slightly worried that I'm not going to have enough. I should have used a knife. This is absolutely a time suck. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough tortillas. Into the thick of it. I'm really sick of it. I heard Natalie Bennett say that. It's been in my head ever since. <laughs> this meat is gonna be dry. 
<laughs> I had to turn on Lauren Daigle because oh, no. music just helps everything. My chicken's finally done. I'm just gonna throw it in this mini pan here. That's a lot of chicken, it's overloaded. <laughs> I seasoned the chicken the same way. Ooh, the lighting is so good. I should have gotten a bigger pan, but here we are. All right, I just ran outside because Wolfgang is allergic to staying inside the house and I saw an Amazon package arrive. Guess what it is, guess what it is. All of these straps, which is crazy because it's it costs as much as like one strap did before, from a Fitbit. Now I can charge it and see how active I am all day long. Another sad bit of news. I guess I need to stock up on my enchilada sauce. I only have green. I was gonna do some red, but here we are. So green, and then I also have some black beans, some corn, and we're just gonna um, pull the cheese out and see what kind of disaster we can make here. All right, so I've got the meats, and I'm gonna add a can of drained black beans to the ground beef. And then to the chicken, I did find a piece in here that I forgot to cut. So I'm gonna have to chop that up. Don't tell the Food Network about my kitchen shear skills. Actually, I should probably test it to see if it even tastes good. That's great. You can just prep this and put it aside. Meat's good, all good. I'm going to add a little bit of corn. Should I just slice it up? And by slice, I mean separate. It just adds so much goodness. My kids love corn, and in my head, I thought I was going to be making street corn enchiladas. So I just took it out. Oh gosh, it's so hot. All right, well, as I assemble the enchiladas, let me tell you a little bit about how I didn't get half of the things done that I wanted to get done, but obviously I have to pivot. I got kids to tend to. There's like 100 people over the house that I'm like, you know, going outside trying to tidy up and all that good stuff. So I wanted to get more done in terms of like prepping for the week ahead. Like I didn't meal plan yet. I haven't, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Like there's always tomorrow, but Whenever that happens, whenever I feel like, oh man, there's you know a laundry list of things to do per the usual, I always slow down. And I've shared this with you guys before. My sister-in-law, wise beyond her years, shared with me one time, like whenever you feel that way, you should literally take out a pen and paper and write down all of the things that you did. And then once you see it in front of you, like wow, just list it. Every single thing that you did. Brought the kids outside made the kids snacks, made breakfast for the kids, wash the dish, do you know what I mean? Like step by step, all the little things that you've done. And then you'll realize, wow, I actually got a lot done today. Maybe it wasn't as much as I wanted, but you know what? Hopefully tomorrow I'll get a chance to do the rest. So that's where I'm at right now. No, I didn't meal prep as much as I wanted. I didn't get the recipes done that I wanted. I also wanted to make a dessert because, well, salt and chocolate is my life right now, okay? And so I, you know, Obviously, life happens and you have to pivot, but that's what I'm telling myself. I did get enough done, even though it was, didn't meet my expectations because I set unrealistic expectations of myself often. <laughs> that's my toxic trait, if you will. I'm always pushing myself. And anyway, it's good enough is where I'm at at the moment. So I am happy that I got some food prepped. If you see to the beef, I did add some... I didn't have any like enchilada sauce to add to it, which I would have like the red kind, ooh, would have been superb. Uh, but I did add some Taco Bell like hot sauce to it. And then for the chicken, I just added some salsa, which I feel like that alone is a meal. Like just cook that and then throw that on top of rice or whatever. I feel like that's a good meal, but I'm making enchiladas here. It's just easy to store in the fridge. It's e even though this would have been just as easy to store in a little container or whatever. But anyway, this is what I ended up doing. Enchiladas are just so simple. I feel like it's a meal all in itself. Get a bagged salad if you're in a rush. I have some, a head of romaine lettuce I'll chop up and serve on the side of this. But this, it's just easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's food for my family. I know that I'll have for the next couple days because some nights, even with all the after school activities and stuff, it can get busy. Throw it in your freezer if you're, you know, set for the week ahead and for just on one of those occasions where you're like, oh, it's a freezer meal night. It's a pizza night or whatever. This way, you know, you have a home cooked meal ready to go. I like to do that and I ha have not been very good at it lately. So I got to get up on my freezer meal game 
And this is a great one to do. Actually, pulled pork enchiladas, sweet pulled pork enchiladas. Oh my gosh, I'm drooling salivating because those are actually my favorite. But that is actually all that I filmed for the day. And I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I know you could be hanging out with all your other friends, but you picked me. It makes me feel so good. Thank you for, be thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. Da -da 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 -da. And if you threw a party. All right, that's enough. Hey, thanks for hanging out. If you want to and you're new and I didn't scare you away by singing that song, subscribe. Put a little happy in your day. I'll see you next time. Bye.